And again, a very warm welcome to everyone. My name is Malika Ramdas. I'm Director of Admissions at UWC SEA in Singapore. And I will be hosting our webinar today, which is focused on our middle school learning program and student experience. While we wait for a few more attendees to join this Zoom webinar session successfully, I'm going to invite you to take a look at two short videos that give you a glimpse of a day in the life of our middle schools on each campus. Enjoy. Great, thank you so much. Um, welcome again to everyone who is joining us today for our middle school open day webinar. My name is Malika Ramdas. I'm director of admissions at the college. And thank you for giving up part of your day to learn more about our middle school program on both our campuses. I'm just going to go through the um, format for today's session and also a few guidelines. And then it'll be my pleasure to hand over to one of our two middle school principals. So we begin with these, um, these guidelines and introduction, and then we will spend about 30 to 40 minutes on a presentation from both our middle school principals about the middle school at UWC and the holistic learning program. We'll then end with about 30 minutes of question and answer time, where you will have an opportunity to have your questions answered by our middle school learning leadership, and by myself, if you have any admissions related questions. I would invite you to submit your questions via the Q&A button that you can locate at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So just take a moment to look for that. And you're welcome to submit your questions at any time during the webinar. I would invite you as well to keep the focus of your questions on the middle school experience, the learning program and the student experience, because that is today's focus. Now, during our open days, we have a combination of these webinars as well as on-campus events. And this week, we will be hosting our middle school open day event at the East Campus tomorrow and our middle school open day on Dover this Thursday. So our open days are still very much open for registration, and we welcome you to sign up for those if you haven't done so already. And if you are intending to join us, we look forward to seeing you in person, of course. So today's webinar will be recorded and that recording will be placed on our website as with all our previous webinar recordings. So if you can't stay through to the end, don't worry, you can always catch up through our recording later on. 
Also, just a reminder that we have been holding a series of these webinars, and so today's program does not include a full explanation of the admissions process because we did a dedicated webinar on that subject already, and I would encourage everyone to take a look at that Admissions Explained webinar recording on our website. So today, as I said, the focus is very much on our middle school learning program and student experience. And final thing from me, if you would like to listen to, um, or rather see today's program in a different language and listen to the words of the presentation in a different language, you can activate the show captions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and choose the language of your choice. So you can, you can choose whichever language you prefer and you will see the transcript coming up on your screen in that language. Um, so hopefully that gives all of our multilingual audience some options. All right, so with that, it's now my great pleasure to introduce you to our middle school principal on our East Campus, Gretchen DePoint. Over to you, Gretchen. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm super excited to welcome everybody. And as Malika just described, hopefully by the end of this recording, you're gonna have a better sense and understanding about our amazing program. So just a little bit um, about our leadership team. Uh, here you can see the visuals of the leadership team over on Dover and at East, and you'll have the ability to, to meet some of the, the different individuals uh, later on this session. For myself, I'm Gretchen DePoint. I've been at the college for four years, and I'm blessed with the, the four years that I've been here. I am a diehard middle school educator. I've been in middle school education for about 27 years and as a principal for the last 16 years at the college and prior to that in Bangkok. Next slide. So here uh, are two amazing visuals that really gives you just a quick snapshot as you enter both of the campuses over on Dover um, and on East. Um, and it really just is a great visual to represent what um, is happening at our college. And throughout this morning, you will have a better idea of our, how our program really helps to grow and develop uh, adolescence through this amazing period of adolescence. Next slide. And as you partake in this, this webinar, one thing that you will find out um, if you're not aware is one thing that is really unique and really amazing about UWC is it we are one of 18 schools and colleges uh, and so we are a very strong global community. We have 18 colleges in 18 different countries and in four different continents. And although we're very different and unique, we are very much connected through our strong mission to foster peace and forge a sustainable future. Next slide. And you can see here what is at the, the core of that is our mission. Our mission is, is really at the core of everything. UWC makes education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures for peace and a sustainable future. And throughout this webinar this morning, hopefully you'll really get a true sense that it is well beyond just words of a mission statement and that it's lived throughout every day. Next slide. Here's a here's another visual that um, really shows everything about our our program. It starts with our mission and our values and our goals, and it really goes through with our well-being and learning uh, principles and how they are really at the center to help develop the qualities and skills for all of the students. And as I just mentioned, it is not just about the mission statement being words, it's about creating individuals that really live the mission and having an understanding of why that's so important in their lives. And that's really what makes UWC SCA so special. And this is a visual that just really kind of encompasses and shows you the different aspects of our program. Next slide.
Okay, when we take a look at our um, principles, we talk about our well being and learning principles. And it's really important, as you see, as this visual is, is created so that they're not separate. And that's very intentional. Our well being and learning principles are intertwined, and they're key to everything that happens with our students, particularly with our adolescents. The social emotional well being of middle school students is absolutely essential that we take care of. And and pay attention to. Without that, we do not have students that are happy and engaged in their learning. So that is why we really pay attention. And that's why the well being and learning principles are intertwined so that we can help them construct and reflect on the information and develop those learnings and skills and qualities and moving into the future. Next slide. And you'll take a look at just these visuals uh, that really is uh, pivotal um, and important about our well being principles. We want to make sure that we are developing adolescents that are connected with one another and with themselves, autonomous, so that they can stand up and they are able to reach out when they need support and they can stand on their own when they are definitely with that confidence. And then competent. There's so much that goes on with the adolescents and their development. This is something that's really important that we are developing competent individuals in the middle school. Next slide. Okay. When you take a look at our, the profile of our students and our values and competencies, and you really take a look, these are the qualities that we want the students to develop in, uh, in our program. And at the center of that is our values. We're very much a values-based program. This is how we approach student behavior, is we really want students to be able to learn from the different experiences in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Because when they leave, we want students that can enact the mission. I can provide a, a personal example of this. Uh, my eldest just graduated from UWC this past year. And one of the things that I really saw in with my own two eyes is that these competencies have really been embedded into him Self and his interactions is as he moved into uni, it, there was a visual that didn't align to how he he thought um, that he aligned with the, the beliefs. And his grandmother wanted to speak up and say something. And my son paused and he said to his grandmother, we need to pause. We need to listen. We need to learn to understand how they're feeling so that we can learn from one another. This is just an example, personal example of something that we do within our program is listen to be able to, to learn from one another. And these are the mission competencies as a UWC SEA student. I'll turn it over to my colleague, um, Rebecca from Dover. Thank you, Gretchen. Um, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Rebecca Smith, and I have the privilege of being the principal here, a middle school principal here on Dover campus. I've been at the college for 12 years now, um, and I feel like I've grown up here almost, but I joined the college initially, as Gretchen was talking about the mission, really attracted by that mission. And I stayed here so long and will continue to stay here because I really feel like I'm surrounded and inspired by colleagues and students on a daily basis because that really underpins everything that we do here, that mission. Um, I am also really lucky that my eldest son is now joined the college. He's been with us since K1, he's in grade two now, and my youngest Hugo will get to join next year. So having them get to kind of appreciate and, and have their journey here at UWC is extremely exciting for me as well. So continuing on from what Gretchen was saying, we really do know that students between the ages of 11 to 14 have very specific educational, developmental and cultural needs, which is why our middle school program is very intentionally designed to meet those needs. So we strive to build on the core knowledge, skills and understandings that students have acquired through their time in primary school and really prepare them for the demands of high school by exposing them to a broader range of academic subjects. 
That being said, we're aware that students will be joining us in middle school from a range of diverse educational backgrounds, which is why our curriculum in the middle school, Anna, is designed, it's differentiated, it's flexible enough to meet the needs of all learners. So regardless of the educational pathway that a student has had prior to joining us in middle school, it's they settle in and find a home here very quickly. Next slide, please. Here at UWCSEA, we recognize the uniqueness of middle schoolers. They're at a crucial stage in their development, one with more mental and physical changes than at any other point in their lives, except for early infancy. Um, I once saw middle school described as a gangly, growing, gleeful time, and I love that. And I think it sums up the middle school experience and why I love working with, with middle schoolers for that reason. It really is a period in their lives characterized by an enormous expansion of their views of themselves, but also their place in the world. The middle school years also offer a real opportunity for, for parents to step back and for students to step up in terms of their own kind of organization, their own self-regulation as they begin their journey to becoming young adults who can make a positive influence in the world. Next slide, please. So we believe that an effective middle school is developmentally appropriate, developmentally responsive. It's challenging for our students, but it's also empowering for our students in line with the specific needs of that age range. So our program is tailored to meet those needs um, by a team of experienced specialist teachers. We know that this age is the ideal opportunity for students to develop character through appropriate challenge. And we encourage our students to really step outside their comfort zones in lots of different areas within our learning program. We also know that it's really important for middle schoolers to enjoy their experience and their adolescent experience, and we want them to be happy. Next slide. Our priority here at the middle school really is to make sure that our environment is caring, it's safe and it's nurturing during this key developmental stage. And that's why we see student mistakes um, and behavior issues as opportunities for growth um, and opportunities for learning because they will make mistakes at this age. Next slide. So given that this is such a distinct developmental phase with specific needs during which young adolescents experience rapid physical, social, um, emotional and academic growth, we have intentionally brought together a range of specialist teachers, teachers who are expert in teaching this particular age range and really passionate about supporting our students to thrive in early adolescence. Next. One key person that our students will see every day when they're in middle school is their advisor or mentor. And this is somebody who works with our students, with a group of students to really get to know them, to support them and to advocate for them. So the advisor and mentor is a very key person in terms of your middle schooler while they're here with us. Next slide. Beyond teachers and advisors whose students are interacting with on a daily basis, all of our grades are led by heads of grade who oversee the learning program for the individuals within their grade. They also work closely with us in the middle school leadership team to, to create a support network around each child as needed on an individual basis. Next slide. I think we're really lucky at this school to have a range of student support and services in place, um, again, beyond teachers and advisors. If you click to the next slide. These include a whole range of different services. So we have digital literacy coaches who work to support students with kind of getting used to using laptops in an academic setting um, and to navigate our learning platforms. We're also really lucky that we have a dedicated Apple IT support desk where students can go to kind of get any support with their digital devices um, and can help them at any time with any software issues. We have a fantastic well-resourced library with librarians, teacher librarians who work with our students. Um, and we also have a fantastic counselling centre, wellness and counselling centre for our students. And it's worth saying, parents, that all of these um, support services are also aware, available to you as well. Next slide, please. So one of the real strengths of our school um, is in our holistic approach. And today what we're going to do, myself and Gretchen will talk you through and give you some insight into each of the elements of our holistic learning programme. 
So holistic education in our middle school, it's dynamic, it's interdisciplinary approach that nurtures the comprehensive development of students by focusing on the individuality of each learner. And in middle school, that is extremely important that we really do nurture the students as individuals. And it really is focused our holistic program on building self-confidence, self-esteem and character. Next slide, please. So this visual here um, shows you our holistic learning program. And what you'll see is it consists of five interlinked elements, which you can see kind of around the center circle. These five elements represent the different components of our holistic learning program. So you can see that we have activities, outdoor education, personal and social education, service and academics. And on the outside of that circle, what you'll see is kind of the idea behind our holistic program is that a combination of all five of these elements really does provide our students with a holistic values-based education that develops them as individuals, but also as global members of a global society. So our broad approach to the five elements ensures that all students build confidence um, in terms of meaningful engagement across all five elements. They're gonna find their drive and their passion at some in, in, within that learning program. For some students, it's that they're particularly passionate about one of those elements. And for some, they'll find passions within all. And again, that speaks to the individuality that we're looking for. We also try to connect the five elements. So for example, students in middle school will go on an outdoor education trip, which then connects to their service and academic subjects. So to give you some more insight into the first of our element of our learning program, I'm going to pass it back now to Gretchen, who will speak to you about the academic program. Thank you, Rebecca. So I'll share a little bit more about our amazing um, academic program. And as uh, Rebecca just talked about, it's really important um, at this age that our program is aimed and very specific for young adolescent development because it, they need to be active. The learning needs to have meaning. It, if it is just arbitrary information, they're less engaged. And that's why our program is really purposeful because the students need to be engaged in their learning. They want We want students to care about their learning. We want them to care about the world around them. And what's really important at this time, as they are learning, a lot of the, the learning also is learning about themselves because we want them to develop a strong sense of belonging within our um, community. We do have a concept-based uh, academic curriculum, um, and this really fosters that deeper level of thinking. It goes beyond um, how I learned as an educator. It's much uh, deeper than just the, the what. Uh, we can find all of the information and search it up on our phones, on our laptop. So what we want our students to do is have a, a deeper understanding, a broader understanding of the world around them. We give them world, real world scenarios and we want to encourage them to inquire about why things are the way they are and how they are beyond just information. This really does help uh, cultivate the critical thinking skills so that they can go deeper and then that actually helps with retention. Next slide. And so we really need to make sure with this, with real world scenarios and inquiry is it needs to be very challenging and it needs to be relevant. We need uh, topics to be relevant for a middle schooler and they need to be involved in some of those decision makings um, with the curriculum for different projects, for different um, pieces of their, their learning program. Next slide. And that is something that uh, we do well. So as you're as you're listening to us, you're also seeing a story being created with the visuals, with the visuals of middle school students on Dover on an east. And you can see from the different visuals, there are many things that are happening. It's not just students just sitting in a desk and recording and listening from a teacher. There are so many different learning approaches and teaching approaches. And it's important that there's not one size fit all and it's not just the, the recall. There's so many different 
different things that are incorporated into different lessons so that the students are able to apply the knowledge, apply the knowledge within their classroom and ultimately carry it beyond that classroom and apply it to various contexts and unfamiliar situations. There are also um, interdisciplinary connections because we don't want students just to be learning math and math classroom and science and science classroom. That's not how the real world works. Uh, so we want to train and we want to develop thinkers so that they are transferring and learning the connections of concepts or, that are interconnected between different subjects so that they have a deeper understanding of the, of the world. This looks different, um, it, how we evaluate with assessment practices. So rather than just traditional rote testing um, sessions, there are a very uh, type of assessments. There may be um, projects, there may be collaborative projects, there may be different, um, different things that they do to show their teachers their level of understanding and not just recalling and telling them back the information. Next slide. Okay, so as um, referenced already earlier, we have subject specialists um, within our middle school program. Um, and it's really, really important because then that helps our students, our middle school students, really go deeper with it that information. Um, because with the subject specific specialist, then they can really go deep into a subject um, and they can have a, a deeper level of understanding within that, that content area so that they have a deep level of knowledge and understanding that they can transfer. Additionally, another uh, important part of our program is, as we talked about, it's important for the students to learn about themselves. And three key areas that we focus on is that self-management piece and the communication and collaboration, because these are skills that students will need in real world settings. And so these uh, skills are fostered and developed within their academic classrooms. Next slide. Okay, so through this visual, you can see the, the list of different middle school academics that our middle school students are have the opportunities to, to take. It is very broad and it's very balanced. And it's something that's very important at this age so that students are able to have the opportunity to expand some different interests and find some, some maybe new passions as Rebecca just talked about. There, with the exposure to music, visual arts, design technology, life skills, there are so many different things that perhaps a middle school student doesn't realize at the time when they enter middle school that they have a deep passion or interest in a subject area. And this is something with the, the diverse exposure, then they can they learn about themselves and then they are able to um, learn about different backgrounds and the, the different curriculum um, that's offered within our uh, academic program. In talking about uh, middle school East and Dover, our campuses are very, very similar. And there's just one small um, difference. Uh, we have our, our seed program and our food tech of how it's tossed, taught on East is a little bit different than how it's taught on Dover. Um, they're separate classes on the East campus and on Dover campus, they're embedded into um, the, the program. So they're, even though they're all taught, the way it's dispackaged might look slightly different, but they're definitely um, getting the same content um, in the, the full curriculum and academic program. Next slide, please. Okay, so you, you've heard a little bit more um, about our concept-based um, curriculum, which is something that we're very, very proud of um, because we, we talked about the importance of teaching skills and knowledge and understanding beyond just that classroom setting and being able to carry it into to the real world. And really so that those mission competencies become a reality because we are ultimately striving for that, that mission of building for peace and a sustainable future. And our middle school program is designed around doing that and in an age appropriate way because we're talking about middle school students and we're talking about big topics. So it needs to be at an age appropriate level. 
Here's a very, very short video that ex further explains so that you have an understanding about what the concept-based teaching um, and learning looks like within our five elements and of our holistic program. What is concept-based learning? Concept-based learning is centered around big ideas. Ideas so universal that they transfer across place, time, and situation. Content is important, so students must acquire knowledge and skills within each discipline. But the ability to make sense of their knowledge and skills in the world around them is just as important. This doesn't happen by accident. Students are given a variety of experiences so that they develop conceptual understandings, significant ideas that transfer to new contexts. This ensures that they thrive in a complex and unknown future. The UWC SEA concept-based curriculum leads to the IB diploma in grades 11 and 12 and is developed from our mission. Our educational goal is that students embrace challenge and take responsibility for shaping a better world. To do this, they must develop higher order thinking skills and apply their learning to diverse situations. Because our community is so international and diverse, our students bring a wide range of experiences, knowledge, and skills with them when they join us. A concept-based curriculum allows them to connect their prior learning to our experiences at school, as well as develop deep understanding. How do we develop conceptual understanding in our students? Concept-based learning goes hand in hand with learners having a diverse and broad range of experiences. This is achieved through all five elements of our holistic learning program, academics, activities, outdoor education, personal and social education, and service. We explicitly plan for concept-based learning by asking conceptual questions and teaching through inquiry, exposing students to content that stretches and deepens their thinking, fostering dialogue and collaboration, asking students to generalize and apply their ideas to new contexts. Together, these experiences support the development of conceptual understanding in our students. Hey, hopefully the, the video along with our further explanation really gives you a, a good picture of, of what is so special and what's so different with how we approach our how we approach our academic program. Next, I'll, I'll briefly speak to you about laptops and technology. Um, and this is something that is, is really important. We are a laptop program and we have a single platform, which is really wonderful to be able to support. As Rebecca uh, referenced earlier, we have an incredible IT team. We have digital literacy coaches uh, that can help support the students um, through lessons. Um, and also if they need individual support, that also is available to them. Using laptops definitely has changed how we are teaching and learning, um, but I do want to say that it is really important is that we pay attention to the current research. And although we are a one-to-one -one laptop school, that does not mean that students are on laptops all day. I met with a group of students this morning and we were just discussing this and they just said it really um, Ms. Gretchen, the, the feedback is it's different. It depends on what we're doing. It depends on what we're learning, how much we use the laptop. So we, we still use paper and pencil and we still use different tools, although we do have the opportunity to use the amazing tools with our, our laptops. So it really depends on, on the um, day to day of how much they're interacting with their laptop. Another important piece to, to share about this is we teach them how to use them responsibly. Um, it's something within the, the digital world. It's something that is very important that we learn and teach the, the students how to responsibly use technology for themselves and interacting with the, their peers. Next slide. Okay, personal and social education is one of our five elements of our program. 
And this is something that is really pivotal. And we talk about it many times as being the key within our program. Because adolescence, it's so important for students to learn about themselves, learn about their relationships with others. And this is why it's such an important element within our program. Next slide. Okay, and I'm talking about being self-aware. Uh, the PSE is in all grades. Um, it is. It lives in all of the different parts of our program. And what is important is we really talk about and teach the students uh, about their emotions, how to learn how to regulate their emotions, how to form friendships, because they make so many different friendships in these middle years, and how to be able to, to work independently with, uh, with confidence and how to, to work collaboratively towards goals. And we really want to, to do this and focus on supporting their own well-being, supporting that sense of belonging within a community, and then really to make sure that there's a commitment of care to support themselves and global, global communities. Next slide. Okay, one of the places um, it was referenced earlier in this webinar is we have a very strong advisory and mentor program. And this is the adult that your child sees at the beginning of every single day. And it's a very special time because that's a, a small community within the, the college that where they work together with their peers, but also they develop the relationship and hopefully that adult becomes a trusted adult so that they know that if they have any time of need, that they have a caring person that they can directly go to to help support their well being. Certainly, all teachers uh, are here to support their well being, but the advisory mentor program also really helps facilitate that and it helps your child kind of start their day, helps them plan, helps them organize with everything that's happening throughout the school day. And they also deliver some of the PSE program um, and the, the curriculum. The mentor and advisor also is someone that helps support the outdoor ed program because we do go on uh, outdoor ed experiences and the mentor and advisor uh, goes along with the, the students in the mentor class. And you have the opportunity every year to meet the mentor teacher at the very beginning of the year with meet the teacher's evenings. And certainly at any point there, you can have any, any communication and, and meet with the, the teachers uh, at different events throughout the year. Next slide. The next major um, area and curriculum where our PSE curriculum is addressed is in an amazing class called Life Skills. And this is where we explicitly teach these skills. And it's very much a di discussion and activity-based uh, curriculum. And it really is about creating a safe space for the, the students to, to talk openly about some of the challenges that they're facing with adolescents. This is also another um, area where we teach about technology. We teach about them, the changes that they're going through. And again, it's really to make sure that they have a deeper understanding of themselves and in the, the world around them. Next slide. Okay, so on this visual, you can see kind of the three areas that the life skills curriculum really approaches. Um, and teaches too. It's really about the, the personal. Um, they learn about mindfulness. They learn how to become independent, um, about SRE, um, about personal safety, interpersonal, really how do I interact and how do I collaborate with others? How do I manage really difficult situations that I come into with, with friendships? And then the global, really taking a look at the diverse world and how do I fit in and how do I help positively contribute? And this is something that's very important because we really value um, the respect and how to respond and how to work with one another, going back again to our mission. And this is a specific space uh, that is taught uh, about that in life skills. Next slide. 
Okay, just another visual that just kind of gives you a little bit of a deeper dive to show you some of the, the bigger concepts as we talked about our concept-based teaching and learning. Here's some of the, the bigger concepts um, that you can see. It's a, around that, that character development. It's around resilience. It's around forgiveness. It's about self-care um, and that self of meaning. Um, and these are just some of the different examples. And also, how do I set goals? How do I set personal goals for myself so that I'm really pushing myself to become better and to, to live a healthy life? Next slide. And we're, we go into activities and I'm turning uh, the mic over to Rebecca to talk about our activities program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gretchen. So I mentioned earlier that um, our holistic education program here at UWC really is all about helping students to kind of create in, creating intentional opportunities so that our students can develop themselves, find their passions and thrive. And our activities program is one of the ways in which we aim to do that. Next slide, please. Okay. I'll give you a minute to digest those numbers. Um, I look at those and think I'm reminded by how many incredible opportunities our students have here. It's quite an astounding number of programs that we have on offer through our activities program with 97% of our students body participating in one or more activities throughout the week. So the, it's just, it's a phenomenal array. I would be here all day if I even attempted to read those out to you or give you a sense of all the things that we offer. Uh, but both campuses offer thousands of different activities and all middle school students will typically participate in a variety of um, activities across the program, which includes, next slide, a whole host of activities focused on arts, performance and music. We have rock bands, we have orchestra the, um, and whole array. Um, just last Friday, for example, we celebrated UWC Day, which is an annual day of celebration of the UWC movement. And in the plaza at lunchtime, we had students performing, middle school students performing um, to their peers. And it was just fantastic. Lots of rock bands, lots of individual um, performances going on. Next slide, please. Again, a whole host of sports, fitness and wellness opportunities for our students. They're involved in lots of different competitive and non-competitive sports. We, we operate an access for all philosophy where students have the opportunity to get involved in any sport that they want to. And then there are competitive opportunities available for those who want to really kind of progress within certain sports um, opportunities as well. We have everything from the regular sports that you can expect to beach volleyball to parkour. The list goes on. Next slide, please. A really popular area within our activities program for our students is all around kind of leadership and global affairs. So we have debate clubs, opportunities for students to get involved in TEDx events um, and also MUN events. Next slide, please. We also have an ideas hub on, um, and students are, can get involved in design, technology and innovation related activities. Next slide. And really the whole purpose here is about that finding of passions. And it really does come down to the personal character um, of each individual and what they want to find um, as their areas of interest, both their kind of areas they want to excel at or just try out new, new different opportunities. There really is something for everyone. It's a fascinating program. Next slide, please. Another element within our learning program that's very special and unique uh, here is our outdoor education program. So here you can see some students who were on their grade six trip to Tiamen last year. And this time next week, I'm very excited, not that I'm not super excited to be here, but next, this time next week, I will be in Tiamen with a grade six group uh, for their adventure week. So cannot wait for that. Outdoor ed curriculum here, it really does, next slide please. So our outdoor education curriculum here at UWCSEA, again, it's all about that age appropriate challenge, um, but creating opportunities for intentional development of personal identity um, and also for navigating healthy relationships. So it's an extension of all of those different skills that they're learning through life skills as well. And they get to see those play out through their outdoor education experiences. We also focus on connectedness to nature and all of these different um, areas that outdoor education supports. 
really are research backed um, because we know that all of these are essential for students to feel well, to thrive as well. Next slide, please. So our outdoor education trips will, whether in middle school or at any point within their time here, they really are memory building and relationships. Some of the best friendships are made on these trips. And these are the trips that our students and our alumni speak about after they come back to visit us, which they do a lot after they leave the college at post-graduation. And they speak about their time on outdoor education trips and the memories that they formed there. So they're going to remember their experiences on these trips for years to come. And they're so special. That's why they're part of why they're so special. You can see here a sense of some of the numbers this year alone who participated in trips. We have a range of trips available throughout um, middle school, both some are required and some are optional. And you can see the number of students who participated in non-adventure trips this year so far alone, and that we've had 352 non-adventure trips going out so far this year. So again, a whole host of opportunities that are available to our students. Students in middle school will go uh, every year, they will have one week camp, um, which is an, an, over, an overseas trip where they will go along with their peers in their advisor and mentor groups. And, really embrace age appropriate challenges uh, over the course of that week. So for example, in Tiamen, um, Tiamen, you saw the picture there for grade six, our grade six and seven students go to Tiamen, um, both to different areas within Tiamen and different um, levels of challenge that they have that's appropriate for their age group. Our grade eights will go this year to the Wild Lodge in Thailand, again, uh, ramping up that level of challenge each year on those trips. Next slide, please. And with that, I'm going to pass over to Gretchen to talk, you, talk to you about the final element of our learning program, which is service. Thank you so much. Uh, so I have the pleasure to talk to you about our service program, which is absolutely remarkable. Um, and it really lies at the heart of our mission statement. It really is where students have the opportunity to, to move beyond that classroom, to, to put into, into practice and take a look at some of the challenges that different communities are, are faced with and be able to build a strong sense of resilience and collaboration and oftentimes remarkable leadership. If you, with all of the different um, aspects of our uh, service program, there are so many different opportunities that benefit the students themselves and the community around and really enhance their academic understanding. Next slide. Similar to the academic activity slide, sorry. Um, take a look and pause and look at those numbers. It truly is remarkable how many of our students are actively involved in service and the impact that they are having to our local community and our global community as well. Next slide. Okay. Within the service program, there's a lot of intentional learning that is built into what the, the students are doing. Obviously, they're learning from the experience, but it's something that's really important, that it is really increasing their awareness and that they have that time to really reflect and evaluate on their experience and really becoming a change maker because then that helps foster that personal growth with each of the students um, because through the partnership that we have at the, the college with many local organizations and global organizations, it really is something that if you talk to our students that they really will reflect and have um, really specific things of how they have grown and pushed themselves. I will, I'll share another personal example before um, I end and then turn it over is uh, my, my daughter is involved in a, a service uh, here that she found kind of a need for um, with crocheting um, because she was trying to find ways for herself to, to be more self-aware and decompress. So she taught herself to crochet and then she was able to find an organization that needed different blankets for, for orphans um, on another continent and was able to use her student leadership and liaise 
opportunities and create a service and work with other students. And then to be able to, to, to ship their different squares that are ultimately crafted into to blankets um, for students in need. So this is just one very, very small sliver of an example that I can share with you as a parent of how much learning for my own child came about for by having the opportunity to be involved in a in a service and being able to to have a trusted adult to help support that process to be able to extend beyond the classroom and really truly having an impact on a, on a global community I want to thank you very much um, for the time that you spend uh, with us today. And I'm going to, to hand you over to Lucy and Katie at this time. Thank you, Gretchen. Hello, everybody. I'm just gonna move you over onto this screen here. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, really great to see so many people online and um, enjoying the middle school presentation today. My name is Lucy. I'm in the communications and marketing department here at UWCSEA. I am also a parent at the school and I was a parent before I was an employee. So I was once in your shoes trying to decide which school to choose for my children. And um, I feel like I have definitely made the right choice here at UWC. So we are going to now move to the live Q&A part of the session. And we have our... Um, we have our vice principals with us from middle school and Gretchen's going to remain with us as well. And we also have Malika from admissions if we have any admissions questions coming in. So thank you for your questions so far. I'm going to get straight into them and we will start with um, a bit of a, a question that sort of deals with both, both curriculum and pastoral aspects of um, students arriving at UWC from other schools. So I'll, I might direct this to um, Paul and um, Ardeen and Nick, since we haven't heard from them yet. Um, you can introduce yourselves and, and um, get stuck into the question. Paul, the first part will be for you. And that is around how do we support children who move from another school or another IB school in Singapore or abroad, to be honest, um, and how do we support them into our curriculum then and as they adjust to the academic expectations and the concept-based curriculum that we offer? So we'll, we'll go over to you, Paul, and then I will, um, I will introduce Ardeen and Nick. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi, my name's Paul Brogdon. And as Lucy said, I'm here at the Dover campus. I'm the middle school vice principal of academics. It's always a good question when you're thinking about moving schools and how will your, your child settle into a new school. And of course, we're really aware of that. You know, we, we have students joining us every year. And I would say the beginning of the school year is, is, is a, a new start for everybody after the summer break. And um, we mix up our students every year into different classes. So the beginning of the year is very much getting to know the, their classmates, getting to know their teachers. And our teachers really begin the year settling students in, you know, getting them used to if it's a new subject or a new topic, uh, how things work in that class. We phase things in gradually, things like homework. We, we, we ease our students into that. And we're very used to students coming from different styles of learning, different backgrounds, whether it's a national curriculum or IB curriculums and so on. And I, I think the beauty of the, the concept based curriculum we've got is we've written it ourselves. We have a lot of control over it. We can adjust for our classes, we can adjust for students, and it's really designed to build that conceptual understanding. So as a teacher, you work with the students who are in front of you, um, and you know I've taught here for a few years, and every year I've got fresh faces in my classroom, and, and it's not always obvious who was here last year or who's a new student. I know who they are because of my registers, but we start again each year, and I think we really spend time getting to know our students personally and and pastorally, it's much more important the academics to begin with. And then we build those skills, we build the knowledge and the understanding and all of our units at the start of the year designed to allow students to feel comfortable, learn about themselves, show their teachers what they can do. Um, and after a few weeks, I know this from my own teaching, you really can't tell who were the new students who have joined the school compared to the ones who were here last year. So we work really hard to make them feel comfortable and settle in and, you know, academically, we don't tell any of our students to spend their summer revising and preparing for the next school year. We don't want them doing that. We want them having fun with their families, maybe reading a book or you know, following the news and things like that. But there's no need to prepare academically to join our school. All of our students should feel comfortable very quickly in our classes. Wonderful. I'd like to add to that. Th thank, thank you, Paul. Um, I will hand over now to Ardine and Nick, who can introduce themselves and talk a little bit about the pastoral side 
of um, inducting and welcoming our new students and how we help them to, to settle in and what that sort of induction slash orientation week looks like. Okay, thank you. Um, Nick, if I, I'll just start first and then I'll hand over to you. So hi, everyone. I'm Adi Manzi and I'm the Vice Principal of Student Wellbeing here on the Dover campus. Yeah, we do find that our new students do settle in very quickly to the school. Our, our kids are very welcoming and they're actually just waiting for, for new students. Um, when we ask for buddies, we get inundated for the number of students that want to be um, buddies. And when we have our new student orientation, we had to actually stop um, the amount of students that wanted to be involved because it was just costing us too much in food to um, feed everybody. So we have a, a lot of students just, just waiting for, to um, meet um, new children and, and getting them um, sorted to, to start the school year, be it um, they're starting um, halfway through the year or at the beginning of the school year as well. We also have our advisory or our mentor program and that means that new students will be part of an advisory or mentor class where they have 21, 22 other students that they are with for many of their classes and with um, daily with them as well. So they have that lovely connection and ability to get to know others very, very quickly. Thank you, Adine. Nick, would you like to add to that? Sure, not, not too much to add. I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm one of the vice principals on the East Campus and I'm head of the, the pastoral care, similar to Ardeen. But I know uh, for new students, I think probably what we hear based on feedback when we survey after our, our well-being um, inductions with students is that uh, they're, they're most concerned about who, who's going to be my friend, where can I fit in? Um, and that's really what we focus on helping them with is, is connecting with peers, um, as our dean mentioned, through our buddy system and, and our mentor and advisory programs. Um, and we do a lot of work actually with our counseling team and we run sessions that are called culture shock sessions that uh, we pull new students out and we kind of take them through the process of the, the psychology behind transition and, and what is actually going on in their brain to help them understand um, all these different elements of, of change. But it's something that we take very serious and put a lot of time and effort and thought into to transitioning our new students. Fantastic. Thank you all. I think that's answered a few of those questions that came in around transition from an academic perspective, but also from a, a well-being and pastoral perspective. So thank you for that. One question that did come in, which is actually more related to high school, but I think it, you know, we can just touch on it briefly here now. Um, and uh, anybody can jump in really, it's sort of, it's both academic and pastoral again, but it's just around the general support mechanisms which help our students to transition through the grades. So the, the question is coming around transitions from, you know, 9, 10, 11 and 12, which are obviously our high school years. But I think we can just speak generally to the support through the, the mentor, uh, the mentors, um, counselling, learning support that actually support, our, there are structures in place that support our students throughout each grade and as they tra transition from both school section, middle school to high school, and also within those, you know, those grades within those school sections. Is there anything else that um, you would like to add just around how we support our students as they move through the grades? I, I can start here a little bit. Um, I can speak as a parent and as a vice principal here. I've got two children who left the middle school a couple of years ago. They're now in grade 10. And I've got my youngest who's now in grade eight, who's approaching high school. Um, I would say there's a lot in place to support students and, and families as they move out of middle school into high school. It's a really important time. Um, there, there are choices to be made in terms of academics. And we start the process early. We We've already been meeting with the high school and talking with the high school. We've been talking with our grade eight parents already about what structures are in place. And really, there's there's lots of choice availability, um, new things to do in high school. It's very exciting. But we spend a lot of time in grade eight, really informing families, working with the students, working with the parents, giving them all the information they need, helping them to make those choices. And remember that our curriculum is designed, you know, from from the primary school through middle and into high school. So it's quite seamless in terms of moving through those subjects. So there's choices, there's exciting new things to pick in high school. Um, and our students have a lot of support. So there's, there's a lot of help there in terms of making that transition. We work at the pastoral and the academic side to make that a success. Mm, fabulous. Thank you. Um, Paul, whilst I have you, I will direct a, an academic question to you. So a question is coming around science. What uh, specific subjects are taught in science? Yeah, um, our science courses in middle school are an integrated science course. So as you'd expect, probably there's 
there's physics, chemistry and biology in there, but where possible, they're integrated. Um, and a big part of our middle school science courses is using those amazing science labs we've got with our science teachers and a lot of science investigation and practical skills to develop there. And a, a great deal of the grade six at the beginning of the year is getting them to be scientists and they get their little contract to say that they're safe in the laboratories. And we do lots of training around that, but they are integrated courses. But I would say the units, when you look at them, of course, there are some that are more biology, chemistry and physics. So I've just got some of them in front of me here. So in grade six, they have a unit on energy and sustainability, how do we transfer energy efficiently? In grade seven, there's one on microbes and disease. How do microbes and disease impact humans and the planet? Very timely one, that one. Um, grade eight, human impact on the environment. What is the chemistry behind climate change? So that it's always about conceptual understanding. Knowledge is important. Understanding is important and the skills are super important. Um, very popular courses, our science courses. And we do science fairs and lots of interesting things like that. So I'd say um, we we talk to them as though they are scientists. It's all about becoming a young scientist. So very popular courses. Mm, fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Um, Gretchen, another academic question that I will direct to you is um, how do you manage students who are able to accelerate their learning in certain subjects on their own and go beyond the curriculum offered by the school? So if someone has a particular interest in and gift or skill in a certain area, um, how do we manage those students? Absolutely, wonderful question. Um, that's something that is, you know, our teachers, as we talked about, are specialists within their area. Um, so they would take a look at each individual student and if they see that a, a student is really ready to go deeper and really be challenged, then that is something that the um, teacher may different, differentiate and give the child something to, to really deepen their level of understanding. It's really important that it's not, as I referenced earlier, it's not a one size fit all. Um, maybe, you know, maybe there's a student that is struggling with the information and maybe a student that is really excelling. That might even be a temporary partnership because as we know, when I have to explain things and how I explain things deepen my level of understanding. Um, and so that might be just a, a quick example, but there's lots of different ways of what the teachers will do to help push um, each individual student at their their level and what they're able and capable of doing. Mm, great, thank you. Whilst I have you, and and this is also um, for Paul to to sort of uh, to contribute to. What about a student who perhaps doesn't have the level of uh, the same level of of academic skill and is perhaps struggling in in specific subjects or has learning support needs? How do we support those children? Yep, great question. And again, it goes back to the specialists. We we have an amazing team of specialists. We have EAL specialists. We have learning support specialists that will work with um, students if they need that support. And they will also work with the, the teachers so that the teachers are equipped and they know the strategies that will best help support each individual student. Fantastic. Paul, is there anything to add there? Yeah, I think it's it, it's an area of research that we're really working on as a school at the moment. We're, we're talking a lot about um, neurodiversity and we, we've just rolled out a new policy, which is called challenge and access policy. So we're looking at students who need stretching as well as students who sometimes need support. And, and what we know is that if we put things in place for some students, it will benefit many other students. So, we're um, you know, a lot of our curriculum, our assessment tasks, our teaching is really looking at neurodiversity and understanding that not all learners learn the same way. And at times people find things challenging. Um, and I think as Gretchen said, there's lots of support. Our teachers are specialists, our curriculum's flexible. We have academic drop-in classes and things like that to support students at break times, lunch times, after school. Um, we have learning support teachers who work in some classrooms. So there's lots of support here. My, my own children have benefited from that at times as well. And uh, students are, um, actively involved in their learning. They make choices, they make decisions. We talk to our students, it's not one size fits all. So I think we tailor what we do in the classroom for the students who are in front of us. And we know that they learn differently at different times in different ways. So we're constantly adjusting as we go along and we do aim to support all students. If we need help, there are people we can reach out to here. Terrific. You mentioned assessment, Paul, and we've had, as you'd expect, many questions around assessment. So I'll throw this question to both yourself and to Gretchen to, um, to discuss. There are a few different elements of, of assessment that have uh, questions that have come in. So the first one is around how 
how assessment is conducted in middle school. And then the second part is really around, you know, how are you benchmarking the learning outcomes of our concept-based curriculum? So are there international or tr traditional curriculums that you use to benchmark? And um, what's, our, what's our approach to, to assessment overall? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, assessment's obviously a crucial part of teaching and learning. We we spend a lot of time talking about this and planning for this. And the important part of assessment is also the feedback part of that cycle and, and the information that we're sharing with students is really important for their learning, for their well-being. So we again, we spend a lot of time thinking about this. We've got clear policies uh, and all our curriculum and assessment tasks are designed with learning in mind. And we talk a lot about assessment for learning rather than assessment of learning. And that's what we want it to be. We want the assessment to be part of that learning process, not just here's your grade at the end of it. So our, our assessments are really good. You know, they are conceptually based uh, as you'd expect for our curriculum. And it's really about helping our students know where they are, what they need to do to where they want to get to get to. And, and our assessment tasks are authentic. They're based on real life examples where we can. Um, they're timely, they're goal directed. Students can act on that feedback and the assessments they've got, which is really important. Again, we just wanna give them the grade and then move on to the next thing. So when they're getting feedback on their assessments, then they know what they need to do with it. And that's really, really important. It looks very different in different subjects at different times. You know, it's not just a test or an essay. It can be investigations, practical tasks, homework, classwork, group work, pair work, individual work. Sometimes they're making something visual. Sometimes, I mean, I'm teaching about cities in my grade eight um, urbanization unit that we're doing at the moment in humanities. And I've had students building cities out of Lego and drawing them and planning them online and using 3D models and just many different ways that students demonstrate their learning that we assess and then we give them feedback on. And we want them to learn that way. And we don't do end of year tests in middle school, big, big exams. We don't have an exam week because they don't learn that way in middle school and it's not the best way to close that loop of learning. So I'd say our assessment tasks are all the time, ongoing, formative feedback, assessment for learning. Um, and we also use the same grading scale across all subjects. So although it looks different in different subjects, different times, students know how we're going to be assessing them and, and we involve them in that process too. I don't, Gretchen, what would you add to that? I think just to connect on your your last statement is that the students are involved in that um, because the the research tells us it's all about the feedback and the the feedback a lot of it needs to be internal as well uh, because we we want the the students to to really be able to to know themselves and know themselves as a learner because that's how they're going to be successful as they move up into to high school if they know their their stretch areas they know their their challenges challenges and if they're able to to look at an assessment and to be able to reflect and identify the areas where they were where they struggled and then able to to be able to go and look and say okay now this is where I would go to find this information or dig deeper um, rather than just Paul telling me exactly what I I did right and what I I was really challenged on so that is an important part Additionally, also the the peer assessment be able to be able to have that conversation with a, another middle school student and to be able to respectfully have a conversation and give each other feedback that's going to ultimately help um, Im improve both of the the students and and grow. Thank you, Gretchen. And I think I can also add there's some information on the website under our learning um, under the learning tab. You can actually see there the middle school curriculum and some information around how uh, the college also uses the ISA testing, which is currently run from grades three to grade 10, um, and the IB testing to inform how we assess and um, our, you know, how we assess our students and also our, in our curriculum review cycles to ensure that we are, um, we have, as, as Paul mentioned and Gretchen mentioned earlier, you know, we, we've got the right approach to assessment and, um, and curriculum. Uh, terrific, thank you. And, and that was a, a really great question. And I know it's very important for a lot of parents to hear that. So wonderful. Um, still on curriculum, uh, somebody has asked about languages. Now we have a very, very robust languages program here. And the question is around, uh, are there any mandatory language requirements when you join middle school? So I think this question, the, the way I'm interpreting this question is, um, can a child pick up a beginner language and an advanced language uh, in, the, in the middle school program? 
who would like to answer that? Gretchen or Paul? Over to you. I'll make a start. Um, yeah, we have a very rich language program here and um, we welcome students with different language backgrounds and different proficiencies. Uh, I think you'd have to look at the, the language fact sheet that I think is available on the website because it changes as you move through the school. But we have a we have beginner languages, we have continuation or foundation languages, we have first or home languages that we offer within the timetable. So lots of different languages there. Um, and we also have our home language program, which has a multitude of different languages from Swedish to um, Hindi to many different home languages that we can't offer in the in the timetable, but we can support families and students with their learning after school as well. So um, I would say have a look at the fact sheet on the website. There's lots of opportunities and students can switch languages as they move through the school as well. Um, some, sometimes students change their languages as they move through the middle school into high school. And of course, we support families with that as well. But um, generally, there's there's an entry point for everybody, depending on what their background is and what their aspirations for languages are. But um, I would have a look at the fact sheet for more detail. Mm, terrific. Thank you, Paul. Uh, let's switch it up a little bit now and we'll go to a few pastoral questions. So um, actually, I'll start with a very easy one that's uh, sort of about class sizes, Ardeen. I've had a few questions come in around um, the student to teacher ratio in our middle school classes. Would you like to take that question? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lucy. Um, so our, our classes probably sit around generally, if we look at an advisory class, would be about 22 students per class. Um, and they'll be with their advisory for most for many of their classes, like their DNT, PE, and so on. And we will cap at 24. So they're nice small class sizes. We have very big classrooms. So we have that mix up of standing desks and sitting desks. So there's plenty of opportunity for those students to move around in the classrooms as well. But when we have a look at our languages, for example, just in a, a French class, so it was a beginner's French class in grade eight. So that had 16 in it. If we had um, 26 students wanting to do Spanish, we would then um, cut that class into, say, maybe, um, you know, like might be 12 in one and 14 in another. So language classes can be quite small, but generally an average of about 22. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ardeen, whilst I have you, this one is a, a great one for, for you and for Nick. So we've had a few questions around diversity. Um, so our mission is uniting people, nations and cultures for peace and a sustainable future. So how do we facilitate conversations in uh, middle school and across campus uh, related to diversified political views? And also we've had a question around um, gender identity. So perhaps you could talk a little bit around our DEIJ policy and um, our, our commitment to belonging and the support that we, we offer students. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll start and then I'll, I'll hand over to Nick. So belonging is at the forefront of um, and our middle school. And we when we say belonging, we mean belonging within your grade level, but we also look at vertically as well in that middle school. We really um, try and push that our grade six, sevens and eight students feel that real sense of community as well in our school. So we are a very inclusive school. You can see behind me, you will see what we call our rainbow steps. And they are there to um, remind everyone that we're a very inclusive school. We use inclusive language. We're very respectful of um, pronouns that our students and staff prefer to use. We will um, teach about respectful relationships within our advisory or mentor programs, within our life schools program as well. But we also work very closely with our counsellors and our wellbeing um, centre as well. And they will run a lot of awareness campaigns and a lot of workshops as well. So um, being inclusive and being respectful and really creating a sense of belonging for everybody to feel comfortable in our school is an absolute priority for us in the middle school. And that's for our staff and students as well. And um, our, uh, you know, our parent community also. Mm, thank you. Nick, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I don't I don't think I could say it much better than than our dean did, but just to echo the same is that it's it's one of the things we take pride in above all is that we are an inclusive community and you can see it um in our academic curriculum, you can see it in our PSE curriculum and all the elements that you've learned about. Um and we have specialists on campus to help us 
um, stay current on the information on these topics uh, that are a DDL team uh, that is at uh, each level of the school and we have a campus-wide uh, DDL uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think, you know, I would also, I can speak as a parent um, and share my experience and my ch children are not in middle school, they're in the, the primary school. But I think that dialogue is one of the things that is most encouraged um, throughout all the grades and all the school levels. So whether you have a difference of opinion, um, it is absolutely fine and that's encouraged to talk about that difference of opinion and it's the respectful dialogue that is such an important part of teaching our children to understand one another. And um, and as Gretchen shared, you know, her her experience with, with her um her childhood and, and the grandmother who sort of said, let's just pause and, and try and understand. And I think that that really spoke to me because I see that happening already in the junior school um, with my my two young children and they sort of pause and think, okay, maybe this person has a different perspective and, and I need to listen to this and understand it. And um, it's quite wonderful to see that in action. So um, on to our next question. Uh, pardon me, sorry, I've lost my, I've lost my place here. Um, Nick, whilst I have you, so we spoke around uh, about, you know, helping students um, to make choices around their, you know, uh, their subject choices and their strengths and so on. I've got an interesting question from a parent here and it says, can you tell us, um, can you share an experience or maybe share if you don't have an experience how you would handle a situation where a child has perhaps chosen a subject based on peer influence as opposed to based on their core strengths. So how do we actually support our students to make the choices that are right for them as they go through the, the grades and as they, they take ownership um, of, their, of their subjects and their journey? What support do we offer them? Yeah, good, good question. I think what sticks out to me there is peer influence, um, <laughs> which is very prevalent uh, in, in the middle school. And if you, I don't know if you remember, if you look back to some of the early slides around our, our well-being policy, one of the principles is, is autonomy. And you'll see that in, in a lot of our PSE curriculum and life skills. So we actually work probably on a daily basis helping students become autonomous and, and work on finding their own voice in their, their own way. Um, I know specifically when it comes into high school choices, I think that might be what, what we're getting at is what, what do we choose in the UWC program or even IB. Um, I know that we start to work with our grade eights in the high school uh, principals come down and, and address these kind of specific issues um, to help students make sure that they're choosing what's right for them. Um, although there's probably not a wrong choice that they're gonna that they're gonna take in, in either of those programs that's gonna have a lasting impact on them. But it is something that we do address specifically um, and help with the transition from, from eight to nine. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Thank you. Can I, can I add to that, Lucy? Mm -hmm. yes, um, please. One, of the, one of the important things is because of the, the peer um, influence is so important. A part of the transition is in addition to speaking to principals and the um, academic counseling, they, they get uh, the opportunity to talk face to face to high school students. So high school students can help kind of share their experiences, which is very beneficial. And our students have said that's really helpful for them to say, oh, okay, it's okay if I choose something different for my, my friends and different things. And just hearing it from someone their age or a little bit older really is something that's very influential and very helpful for them as they're processing and making decisions for themselves. Mm, terrific. Thank you, Gretchen. And then, of course, when students get to high school, they also have the added benefit of the, um, the university advising team who work with them to make choices for their life and uh, after, after, university, after school. Okay, final question, So, um, which is a good one. And anybody can jump in here. But the question is, as parents, we're looking to partner with teachers in supporting our children through their learning process. How do parents get involved in the learning journey? Who would like to take that? I think anybody can answer that. There's lots of great answers. <laughs> I can just start by saying that um, if it's the start of the year, we have a meet the teacher evening, which is a really good way to start the school year. And that's an opportunity for parents to come on campus and they will meet their advisor, their child's advisory teacher, math teacher, English teacher, 
language teacher and so on. So that, that connection's there already, that it's just not a name, it's a person. So we do encourage parents to reach out at any time to their child's um, class teacher, subject teacher, if it's um, academics and they want to know more about, or to their child's advisor. So that's a good way to, for it to start as well. We also have um, a lot of opportunities where we invite parents on campus. It might be um, workshops that we're running. It might be somebody externally and an expert who's running something that will invite parents, but it also will be, might be a member of us here on the screen as well that are um, running workshops to invite parents as well. So we certainly do want parents to um, be part of the child's learning journey. If we have uh, our grade six and seven projects as well, we'll invite parents to come and be part of that. We don't necessarily want parents walking down the corridors and, and so on, staring into their children's classrooms, but we certainly have lots of opportunities where we invite you on campus to be, not just learn to, but to be part of. Thank you. That's terrific. Okay, I think that's all we have time for today. We, um, we will wrap it up. I just wanted to answer one question very briefly around, uh, somebody's asked about, is Dover Campus closing? I can confirm that Dover Campus will not be closing. Um, the lease is up on Dover Campus in 2030, and we are just waiting for um, some, inf we're just waiting for a decision from the um, from well, the various different government agencies just to confirm whether or not we will be on the same site on a smaller parcel of land or whether we will need to relocate. Uh, however, it is not until 2030 and the campus is absolutely not closing. So <laughs> education will continue. Um, so I just wanted to confirm that and put any rumours to bed around that straight away. So thank you very much. I will now hand over to Malika. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you to our panel for answering all the questions, fantastic questions from everyone. And I uh, wish you all a lovely day. Over to you, Malika. Thank you, Lucy, um, for moderating the Q&A and um, a really warm thanks to our middle school leadership teams from both campuses for the presentation and also the Q&A. Um, and for your great questions, audience. So thanks very much. Before we wrap up, I just want to say if you are planning to join us for an on-campus open day this week, we very much look forward to seeing you there. And a final request from me, um, I'm just going to share my screen and give you a QR code for some quick feedback about this webinar. And if you wouldn't mind giving us another minute or two of your time to give us some quick feedback, we'd really appreciate it. So just bear with me. I will get to that in a moment. So thanks again, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you on campus for our in-person open days very soon. Bye-bye. Take care.